What is up guys, Ryan here, and in today's tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys how to create a metal brush effect in Adobe Photoshop. Now there's a lot of different ways you can go about creating it, um, but I'm going to teach you one way that I find helpful and is to me the quickest way um, to go about creating a semi-realistic metal effect um, on, you know, text, circles, logos, or whatever you want. So uh, let's jump into Photoshop and get to work. So this is the style we're going to be creating today, and if you guys want to follow along with this tutorial, um, I'll link it in the description for you guys to go download the file, and uh, once the video reaches about 50 likes, I'll put it down there for you guys to go follow along and uh, use it for whatever you like. So the first thing we want to do, obviously, is go up here to File, New. Make sure the width is 1280 by 720, and we're going to change the name to Metal Tutorial. Hit OK. Change the background. To a lightish, you know, lightest gray, darkish black color. I'm gonna add a color overlay. There we go, that looks pretty good. Hit OK, hit OK. Close that up, and we're gonna call this background layer to keep everything nice and organized. And the first thing we wanna do is go down here to our circular uh, eclipse tool. Hit, uh, click in the center of our canvas, make sure our width is 500 by 500. Make sure that front center is checked. Now normally it won't be checked, but make sure it's checked so everything is proportionate. So now we have a nice 500 by 500 pixel circle in the middle of our canvas. Uh, we're gonna open that up, open up our um, our layer style window. And the first thing we wanna do is go down here to gradient overlay. And I actually already have the gradient overlay preset in here that I made already. Um, so as you can see here, we have, um, I use the same color. Um, I have a light gray here on the end. And then we obviously have a darker light gray, then a white, a, uh, a normal gray, dark gray, light gray. So if you guys want to pause the video and uh, you know just take this, you can. So uh, we're just going to hit OK, and we want to change the scale to about 135, and we're going to change the angle to 150, and uh, that's it for our gradient. Um, I'll also have in, included in the file um, for the tutorial. I'll also have the gradient file that you can put into your presets so that will also be in there too. Um, the f next thing we want to go to is bevel and emboss and we want to change the depth to 1000, change the size to 2 or 3 uh, depending on how big you want your edges to be but we'll keep it at uh, 3. And we want to change the opacity on our highlight mode to 40. And we want to change the opacity mode for uh, on shadow mode to 40 as well. But we're going to change the color to a lightest white, like so. Hit OK. And we're going to change this to um, soft light. Or is it, uh, I forget what it's called. Let's actually go through the thing. So click on it. Let's see. Um, it might be a linear light. I'm pretty sure. I forget which one I used. Um, you know, hard light, hard light looks pretty good, but we'll change that to 50, and uh, that's looking pretty good. So change our shadow mode to hard light and opacity to 50, or you can use what looks best uh, for your style. But for this one, we're just going to be using hard light. Then we're going to go down here and make sure contour is checked, and we're going to change the range to 100, and make sure anti-alice is checked. Next thing we want to go down to is our satin. Make sure it's checked. We're going to change the opacity to 35%. And we're going to make sure the angle is at um, 35% as well. Or uh, not 35%, 35 uh, degree, degrees. Change the distance to 60 and change the size to 60 as well. And uh, what we want to do next is we want to change our uh, make sure anti alice is checked and we want to go down here to uh, let's make sure everything's all good multiply, multiply okay everything's all good go down here to drop shadow we're going to make sure the distance is at zero make sure the opacity is at mm, 85 um, change the size to 50 and we're actually going to pop this down to 50 as well a little too much uh, there we go that's looking pretty good um, our satin is 25, 25, there we go, that's better, uh, 60, 
that's looking pretty good actually we'll change this to 75 and then hit OK and the next thing we want to do is we're going to actually duplicate our layer so right click and hit duplicate layer hit OK and we're going to make sure and sure um, yeah, my mistake. we're going to right click on here and make sure we clear our layer style so everything's nice and perfect and we're actually going to change the color of it to white there we go and we want to go up here to filter noise and then add noise we're going to make sure it's rasterized so hit ok uh, we're going to put the mount to 350 make sure that it's on um, gaussian and make sure it's on monochromatic is checked and hit ok as you can see we have oops my mistake we have our uh, circle there with all of our noise in it and the next thing we want to do is go up here to filter we're going to go to blur and radial blur make sure the amount is at 75 make sure the blur methods on spin and quality on best or good don't put it on draft because then you get kind of sucky quality so make sure that's on good or best hit ok and let it load and in a second we'll have our circle there so that's looking pretty good so we'll just uh, right there looks about good we're gonna uh, hit control D on our keypad and go over here to our thumbnail on our clips one click it and you can see it highlights our selection what we're going to do is we're going to go and select inverse by right clicking and make sure our eclipse one is rasterized which it already is and we'll hit backspace to delete it and there you go so what we want to do is we're actually going to change the opacity to 25 on our brush layer there or uh, 30 30 probably looks better it's looking pretty good and we're going to call this um, brush metal boom and we're going to call this main circle. Boom. And next thing we want to do is we're actually going to go and uh, grab uh, just a simple logo. For now, I have our Twitter logo here. I have it already selected, so we'll hit Control C and then hit Control V on our other canvas, and it pops in our uh, our Twitter logo here. So we'll just center this up. There looks good going to convert this to a smart object and hit control T and we're going to size this up quite a bit so we're going to size this up to about 200 it's looking pretty good right there uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to open up our layer style and going to add a color overlay and we're going to make it the same as our background here and then we're going to go add a inner shadow we're going to put the opacity to 80 put the distance to 15 there and we're going to put the size up quite a bit to about 20 and also put the choke up to 15 and we're going to put the distance actually back down to 10 8 8 looks good and change the opacity to 50 that was my mistake beforehand and uh, that's looking pretty good hit ok and next thing we want to do is we're just going to go up here and we're going to grab a eclipse tool and we're going to just drag out and make sure it's centered in our, um, our circle there which right about there looks good make sure that it's pure white if it would select hmm it's being weird let me unlock it there we go hit ok close that and we're just actually going to select everything, convert everything to a smart object. We're going to select our circle. And then we're going to select inverse. Make sure our clips one is rasterized by right clicking. And delete it. And there we go. And we're going to change the opacity to 5%. And uh, there you go. There's the end of our tutorial. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, um, please drop a like. Let's try to get this video, like I said, to 50 likes. Every like counts, and it supports me to continue to do tutorials for you guys, and um, really helps me uh, get motivated. And if you're not already subscribed, click that subscribe button for more tutorials just like this. And if you're not following me on Twitter, go follow me at Symmetry Tutorials or Symmetry Toots. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and uh, see you later.